my name is Grant Hines and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be focusing on Just Cause. In fact, we're going to be doing a whole history of the series. If you love yourself some Just Cause, I want you to do two things. I want you to smash that like button and then check out the cards in the top right hand corner. It's about over here. It's an information thing that pops up. And there you'll see a whole bunch of links to more Just Cause stuff. And if you love video games, smash that subscribe button. Before we start, I want to thank Megarom for sponsoring this video. So let's free fall into the tropics and talk about the history of Just Cause. So the first Just Cause fell out of the clear blue sky on the 22nd of September 2006 for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, Xbox 360 and PC on an unsuspecting public who expected it to be just another Grand Theft Auto clone. And it pretty much was. Even though GTA 3 was already 5 years old at this point, it was still a dominant force in gaming and its sequels, Vice City and San Andreas, were doing massive business. So a lot of games at the time were mimicking it. Just Cause was basically GTA in the Caribbean. But, instead of playing a criminal, you play the Hispanic secret agent Rico Rodriguez looking to overthrow a dictator. Look, that story is thinner than the razor blade that Rico pretends to use on his designer stubble on his face. But the game did a lot of stuff better than GTA. Environmental traversal was better. The third person combat was better. Even stealing cars was better. But the game was unrefined. It had the makings of a solid game, but it was a bit buggy. The PlayStation 2 version especially. It got mixed reviews, but that didn't stop it selling over a million units because guess what? Even though some games are buggy, they can still be fun. The game was a hit, and that had a lot to do with a few small things that separated from the game that it was copying. That included the huge variety of vehicles that you could steal, like cars, boats, fighter jets, helicopters, bikes, but also the signature grapple hook and parachute. That stuff added a spice and variety that made the game just different enough to set it apart and see it get a very important sequel. Just Cause 2. Four years later, the world's most conspicuous spy, Rico Rodriguez, reappeared, this time on the island of Panua in the Southeast Asian Sea. Once again, Rico's job is to overthrow a dictator, you know, all in a day's work, using stolen cars, skydiving, a grappling hook, and explosions. Just Cause 2 took the elements developer Avalanche introduced in the first game, gave them a buff and a polish thanks to the power of the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, and delivered on the promised brilliance of Just Cause 1. The team refined all the mechanics, the vehicle theft, the third person shooting, the environmental destructibility, and of course the grappling hook. And especially the grappling hook. But the real success was how it seamlessly linked all those things together. None of those systems existed independently. They worked in tandem with each other. You could steal a car, use its velocity to propel yourself into the air, and glide with the parachute to within grapple distance of a jet, reel it into the jet, and then steal it, then use the jet to do whatever the heck you wanted. The game wasn't just open world in the sense that you could go anywhere, it was open in how you could play it. Speaking of open world, the island of Panua was a massive playground, and people are still playing the game today, finding nooks and crannies to sk skydive into or whatever. Anything you could see in the game was accessible, and Just Cause 2 made it immense fun just looking around. Not a lot of games can say that. But things got even better if you were playing the game on PC, thanks to some of the mods that homebrew developers came up with. The most important one, obviously, being the multiplayer mod. If you think Just Cause 2 was fun by yourself, try playing it with friends. GTA may have popularized the open world genre, but to many players, Just Cause 2 defined it. Which brings us to Just Cause 3. In true sequel style, the game that finally makes the series a trilogy also makes things personal. Our man Rico returns to his birthplace of Medici to, you guessed it, overthrow a dictator. From all the release footage so far, it looks like developer Avalanche are taking if it ain't broken, don't fix it approach. Just Cause 3 is going to be more of the same, but with the power of the brand new consoles. They're living in the legacy of Just Cause 2. You can see what I mean by watching other Just Cause 3 videos, and also check the cards in the top right hand corner for a hype video. I'm so proud of that. Uh, it's, it's mad insane. The point is that the game looks like it's going to secure the legacy of the series, and ensure Just Cause becomes one of the games that we never stop talking about. Man. I can't wait to blow stuff up! If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more gaming videos. Until the next video, guys, high five a stranger. Adios.